Hi, this is Danny Doyle, and welcome back to SRPG Sapphix, the series where I break down Fire Emblem characters, story, gameplay, etc. from a queer perspective. When I first conceptualized the idea for this series, there were three major types of episodes I had in mind. The first, and probably most common, would be deep dives into the character of queer Fire Emblem folks, or, in a few cases, specific queer couples, like Raven and Lucius, or Catherine and Shamir. The second was going to be a broader and more zoomed out look at big tentpole issues from a queer perspective, such as the impact that self-insert avatars have on romance and representation. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, my third type of video was going to be extremely zoomed in, looking at specific supports, support chains, or talk conversations, such as the Corin Soleil controversy, or the support chain between Chris and Fina. However, as I started looking into the various successful or unsuccessful instances of queer representation or implications in the Fire Emblem series, I realized that there was a fourth type of video that I would want to make. And that is collections of smaller instances of queer representation or smaller issues from a queer perspective that I still want to talk about, despite the fact that there's not enough there for a full video on their own. And so that's where Gay Thracia came from. Jugdral is quite possibly the least gay continent in the Fire Emblem franchise, but there are still a couple of interesting facets of the continent that potentially imply queer subtext, or at the very least warrant a closer look from an LGBTQ perspective. And conveniently enough, all of the ones that I am aware of and want to look at center on the continent of Thracia. And so that brings us here, to the Gay Thracia video. Well, that's half true, because the other thing that brings us here is my patrons, who voted for the topic of this video. And so, I want to say thank you to Gameboo, Firent, Emery Lafleur, Jamie Collins, Marin Karen, Thick Mulder, Cordelia Frey, George Grenville the 7th PM, Daniel Klaskis, Jagan is Nest, Caius Cole, Taylor Muffin, Dr. Majalis, Herc, SUP, Gabe the Green, Control Alt Aegis, Jeff, Autumn Kelsey, and TB. Your support means the world to me for many reasons, just one of which is the fact that I can now say that I got paid for Gay Thracia research. If you are interested in financially supporting the channel, click on the Patreon link below. It features early videos, polls, cat pictures, and a couple of benefits too spicy for YouTube. But with that out of the way, Gay Thracia time. The Man Who Dagdar Loved Marty is one of the more beloved joke characters in Fire Emblem. He's the first playable brigand in the series, has a goofy front-facing portrait when everyone else is looking slightly to the side, and has extremely funny zero skill and speed bases, with very low growths but huge promotion bonuses. When taken in combination with the fact that his constitution growth is hilariously high and he's presented as a bit of a buffoon in the story, it's easy to see why he ended up with such a large fan base. But one reason that he is popular within the queer fandom in particular is his character ending screen allows for a very easy LGBT interpretation. For those who are not aware, at the end of every Fire Emblem game, each member of the cast is given a title, such as the Blade of Ostia or the Silent Knight. This title is usually only three or four words long and is meant to encapsulate the core of their character in a very short phrase. For Marty, the title that he is given is The Man Dagdar Loved. Since Marty and Dagdar are both men, it's pretty easy to see how this could be interpreted as a male-male gay romance. Dagdar is confirmed to have a child, so many take this as an implication that Dagdar is meant to be bisexual, since he is interested in Marty, but he also had sex with a woman in order to give birth to Tanya. However, he could also be transmasculine and having given birth to Tanya himself, or Marty could be transmasculine. Or, as some people interpret it, this could be a love in a non-romantic sense. After all, Dagdar is the leader of a raider gang, and Marty is one of the raiders in that gang. He could love him in the same way that you love a father figure or a boss if you're weird about your job. Since their bond is forged in fighting, they could have a brotherly love, as is often the case among soldiers who fight together. Or it could just be a platonic love. I mean, I tell many of my close friends that I love them. I don't think that love has to be a romantic thing. I don't think that there is a definitive answer to whether Dagdar's love is romantic or otherwise, at least not until we get an FE5 remake. 
However, I do think it is worth taking a look at it and picking apart what few clues we get from the gameplay and story. From a gameplay perspective, I want to take a look at their supports. Now, unlike in other Fire Emblem games, supports in Thracia are fixed from the beginning. You don't build them by having conversations or standing near each other. If two characters have a relationship, their support is already in place. Many of these supports are one way, and while they are usually 10% supports, sometimes they are 20% supports, referred to by the community as strong supports. Usually these are indications of a very strong relationship between the two characters. For example, Dean really cares about Linoan, and so he gets a 20% support from her. On the other hand, he only gives a 10% support to her, since she cares about him, but not to the same degree that he cares about her. Since Dagdar is the subject of our investigation, let's take a look at his three supports. He has one with Marty, Tanya, and Avo. His Marty support, he gives a bonus to Marty. This makes sense because Marty is fighting under Dagdar. Dagdar is his leader, and so Marty's going to perform better around his boss. This is a relationship that is reflected in a lot of different characters. For example, Selfina and Glade can inspire Kane, Alva, Robert, and Carrion. Well, Glade doesn't inspire Carrion, but Selfina does. It's weird. As a result, Marty being inspired by Dagdar doesn't really mean anything in terms of our investigation, as this style of support is mostly a parallel to leadership stars and the leadership effects. Dagdar being inspired by Tanya also makes sense. Tanya is his daughter, and Dagdar is fighting to protect her, so he's gonna fight a little bit harder when she's nearby. And Dagdar is shown to look up to and respect Avel for her fighting prowess, so it also makes sense that he would fight harder around Avel, kind of trying to impress her. You know, you meet your idol, you want to impress her. Now, it is worth noting that all of these supports are one way, and there's been some speculation as to the reason of that. I've seen people suggest that Tanya doesn't actually love her father, that Avel is annoyed by by Dagdar and doesn't actually want to fight alongside him, and that Dagdar doesn't actually love Marty, otherwise he would be boosted by Marty's presence. And look, Thracia's dialogue is sparing enough that these are definitely distinct possibilities. Many, many things are distinct possibilities. But I think the simplest answer is that a lot of supports are just one way and there's not really a good reason for it. Machua and Brighton are married, and yet their support only goes one way. Leaf talks about how much he respects Xavier, but Xavier is the one who gets inspired by Leaf. Olwen and Reinhardt are siblings close as close can be, and yet they also only have a one-way support, although this might be because Reinhardt isn't recruitable. Selfina and Glade do have a two-way support, but it's uneven, in the same way that Marita and Galzas' support is uneven. Miranda treats Connemore like a father figure, and yet her support goes one way to him and she doesn't get supported by him at all. As a result, I don't find the one-way nature to be damning. And the same is true for the 10% nature of these supports. Tina and Safi are siblings, and yet they only have a 10% support. Asvel's entire character is based around never wanting to leave Leaf again, and like devoting his entire life to him, but he only gets a 10% support from Leaf and Leaf doesn't get anything, it's a one way. The Thracia supports are a very cool way of taking gameplay from the story relationships, but I don't think they are meant to be gospel, especially since none of this is ever presented to the player. It's stuff we figured out through data mining and testing. So basically what I'm saying is the last couple of minutes were a waste of time, and the only thing we actually want to focus on is the character ending itself. Thracia has never had an official English localization, instead relying on a fan translation that takes a couple of liberties when it comes to describing characters and dialogue. So I decided to take a look at the original Japanese for Marty's character title, and I saw that the verb they used for loved was aishita. Now this is a conjugation of the verb ai, which does technically mean love, but it's a little bit more complicated than that. There are multiple verbs for love in Japanese, and I is generally the strongest of them. It is meant to represent one of the most profound and serious loves that a person can have for another, and isn't thrown out casually at all ever. This is in contrast to koi or labu, both of which are less extreme forms of love. Oftentimes, couples will begin their relationship by describing their love with koi, only invoking I later, when it becomes much more serious, such as on their wedding day. So it's safe to say that the love that Dagdar has for Marty is pretty extreme. Marty is someone who is very important to Dagdar. But we can't necessarily say that he's important in a romantic sense, because as much as I emphasize the complexity and depth around I, it is important to note that it does not necessarily mean romantic love, 
and can also be used for family or friends if the bond is close enough. All we know for certain is that Dagdar has some very deep affection for Marty. And honestly, I think that's pretty sweet, regardless of whether or not Dagdar wants to make Marty Tanya's second dad. Is Homer bisexual? Homer, from Thracia 776, is often regarded as the first bisexual character in Fire Emblem's history. This is almost entirely due to the situation surrounding his recruitment. If Nana visits the house that he's in, he reveals that he's attracted to her and joins the army as a result. This is a surprisingly common thing in the world of Fire Emblem. If you visit the house with a woman other than Nana, Homer will remark that she's not very attractive and he won't join you. However, if you visit the house with a man, he will say, I'm not in the mood for a man right now, but come back later. While it isn't made explicit, this seems to very strongly imply that he's talking about being in the mood for sex with a man. And since he says come back later, he means that later he will be in the mood for sex with a man. This could mean he's bisexual, pansexual, polysexual, or any other form of multisexual, but it pretty clearly means that Homer is not a straight character. Regular viewers of the channel might recall that I referred to Legault as the first bisexual in Fire Emblem, and I stand by that statement despite the fact that Thracia came out two whole games before Fire Emblem 7. And that is because the dialogue around Homer's recruitment is... Well, let's say that the translation team has taken several liberties with it. Now, I'm choosing my words carefully because I know that the topic of bi erasure is a real problem within the queer community. And so just to be extra clear, if you strongly identify with Homer due to his bisexuality, that is perfectly fine. And I'm not saying that your headcanon is invalid in any way, shape, or form. However, there is nothing in the actual text to imply that Homer is bisexual. Instead, this is a result of some liberties taken by the Project Exile team that were carried over into the Little Manster translation. From talking to several native Japanese speakers, as well as doing some amateur investigation on Reddit, it seems that the actual line is a much less suggestive, I have no need for men, Go away, please. Not only does this line not imply that Homer is bisexual, but it seems to basically do the opposite. It's pretty rare in media for a character to explicitly say that they are heterosexual, but this is probably the closest that we can get without breaking the fourth wall. Again, if you headcanon Homer as a bisexual icon, then more power to you. I know that Shanam Homer is a popular ship, and that is wonderful for the people who like that but I am just trying to investigate what we have in the text, and what we have in the text seems to imply that he is a straight man. Now's the bit where I become a bit of a parody of myself, because I do think that it is somewhat icky and low-key biphobic that the character whose entire personality is he's a scumbag womanizer was retroactively made bisexual by the fan translation. There's nothing wrong with being promiscuous. In fact, I would consider myself a bit of an asexual slut, However, there is a common biphobic stereotype that all bi people are just really slut. In fairness, Homer is not the only character that Project Exile makes more sexual. A lot of the random generic female villagers are weirdly horny in that translation. Although, I don't necessarily think that that makes it better. Still, I would say that within the text of Thracia itself, Homer is neither confirmed nor implied to be bisexual. But that's never stopped us from slapping pride flags on an anime waifu before, and it sure as shit isn't gonna do it now. So please, please, please make all of your Homer X Shanam smut. Don't let the canon get in the way of their love. So, what's the deal with Altena? Altena isn't playable in Thracia 776. However, she's present in the background of the story, and she plays a more prominent role in Fire Emblem 4 during the arc where Selif is taking Thracia over and freeing it from the Lopter Empire. Here, she not only becomes the game's sole playable Wyvern Knight, but she also gets at some time in the spotlight, as the story focuses on her uncovering her true birth heritage and learning to leave her abusive family in order to embrace the new family she finds in Leaf. Now, people have been declaring the buff Wyvern ladies lesbians since the beginning of the franchise, 
The number of people who want Paula and Minerva to bone is, well, it's a lot. So it was inevitable that there was going to be some amount of WLW shipping surrounding Altena. However, there are a few things about Altena that make it a little bit different from the other Sapphic Wyvern shipping. The first is that the mechanics of the game already prime you to have Altena break gender roles. You see, Genealogy of the Holy War is a multi-generational game. The first five chapters are Gen 1, and you pair people up and then they have babies, and that becomes your army in Generation 2. The way that children's stats and starting inventory are determined depends on both their primary and secondary parents. Normally, the primary parent is the parent who matches their gender. So fathers would be the primary parent to their sons, and mothers would be the primary parent to their daughters. However, for two sets of children, this is reversed. Bridget's children, Patty and Faval, have a reversed inheritance, and so do Quan and Ethlyn's children, them being Leaf and Altena. Now, as much as I like to joke that this confirms that Quan and Ethlyn are actually trans, which is why the roles are reversed, I don't actually think that it means anything on its own. It is vaguely interesting, and if you squint, it could mean something, but at the end of the day, I think it is mostly a mechanical benefit. After all, the gay bulk is for Lance users, and Leaf can't use those until he promotes. The slightly more interesting thing is Altena's romance options, or rather her lack thereof. You see, despite Generation 2 not having children, they can still get married. And there are mechanical benefits to this, like lover crits, as well as some secret events tied to specific marriages. Altena is one of only three Generation 2 characters who is not capable of getting married, the other two being Hannibal and Julia. Hannibal is many, many years the senior of Generation 2, to the point where he is actually the adoptive father of one of them. Meanwhile, Julia is getting over the trauma of almost being murdered by her brother, is shown to mostly be shot down as a result of that, and she gets kidnapped at the end of Chapter 9, so she's not around for the end game. As a result, there are both story and mechanical explanations for Julia not having a lover, and Hannibal was mostly just because it would be creepy. Although, apparently that doesn't stop Oifi and Shannon, so, uh... Ew. It is also worth noting that while Finn is present in both Generation 1 and Generation 2, he's only capable of marrying Gen 1 characters, so if you count Finn's Gen 2 appearance as a Gen 2 character, that would make him the fourth character not capable of getting married. Regardless, Altena's lack of a love growth stands out because she is the appropriate age to marry one of the other children and there's no real mechanical reason for her not to because she's around for the rest of the game. While it's true that she joins late, Corporal joins in the same chapter and around the same time, and they solve this problem with him by just giving him 200 lover base with a couple of women. No, it seems pretty clear that Altena not getting married was a deliberate decision, and in combination with her association with Quan and her rather masculine demeanor, it could be intuited that this decision is as a result of her not being interested in men. Or it could be that she's in love with her brother. Arion is the one who saves her life by pulling a Leo and pretending to kill her in front of King Traban. And in return, Altena is able to recruit him to Selaf's army during the endgame of Fire Emblem 4. Despite some amount of sibling bickering, we do see that Altena and Arion care about each other, and Arion knows that they're not blood related. This leads many people to theorize that Altena is in love with Arion, which is why she's not capable of falling in love with any of the other men. Personally, I think that both of these are valid explanations because FE4 is the incest game, although I would like to propose one that it, I like better than either lesbian Altena or incest Altena, and that is asexual aromantic Altena. Now, the only evidence that I have for this is that she's not interested in romance with any of the men in Selaf's army, and her name is based on Athena, who is famously a virgin goddess in Greek mythology. Despite how famous many of the Greek gods are for getting down and dirty, Athena is consistently depicted as a virgin warrior who upholds the values of sexual modesty. While this could be seen as purity culture, I don't necessarily think the Greeks were really all that concerned with purity culture. Instead, it feels like she's just someone who wasn't interested in having sex, and, uh, that sounds like an asexual person to me. Or, I guess, asexual goddess, because, you know, she's a goddess, not a person. Bringing it back to Fire Emblem, 
if my theory holds true, then the reason Altena doesn't have any love growths isn't because she should have love growths with women, but it's because she should have love growths with no one. Now, I will fully admit that outside of the name etymology and the love growths, there isn't really evidence in the text for this, but that's kind of all that you need to come up with a headcanon, and I figured I would share a fun one with y'all to close out this gay Thracia episode. So, I hope you enjoyed that foray into the scraps of queerness we can find in Jut Girl. It is definitely a little bit starved for LGBTQ representation, but we take what we can get. Are there any queer headcanons or queer subtext that I missed that you wanted me to talk about regarding Judd Girl? Is there anything else that you want to share? Feel free to leave it in the comments. I take a look at all of them. While you're down there, if you liked anything from this video, I would love it if you clicked the like button. And of course, have a wonderful day. Stay safe, everyone.